So you know it's without a doubt one of the best metal albums of 2016. Hate Breed, The Concrete Confessional. <laughs> this album is awesome. It's pretty good. It's, it's, it's brilliant. It is good. Like what they did on this album. It's good. Hate Breed's been put consistently getting better and better with their albums since they put out their first album in 1997. Which, like, you'd honestly, because Jamie Josta does a lot of stuff, and mm -hmm. like, you would expect that maybe from doing Josta and stuff on the side that. Like, it might be hard to focus on Hate Breed and for him to kind of multitask and do all this stuff. But, like, both projects seem to just get better with time now. Yes. He's just, he's just improving on all fronts and still somehow remains as one of the, like, the most genuine dudes. Like I said, every album has gotten better since since Satisfaction is the Death of Desire, since 1997. Yeah. And it's been, I mean, it's been three years since the last album, since The Divinity of Purpose. One thing I find that maybe that some people complain about Hatebreed is that it all like sounds the same. Together. Almost like what happens with bands, and the whole, I don't know, it's like disturbed almost a little bit, where people kind of have the same mentality of it, and it just always the same. But Hatebreed is just... Hatebreed is not a band you want to sound different. No, it's just you want, you want music to just slam every time you just want it to sound, because what the people that go to Hatebreed shows are just like, they're looking for just the same fight music. Yeah. <laughs> Hey Breed is straight fight music. Looking for that same, you know, consistency. Thought provoking perseverance from these lyrics. Right. You know, that's what they want. And that's what we get with the Concrete Confessional. The album doesn't you weaken. Yeah. No, it Any doesn't. Points. It, it remains. I wouldn't say that there's certain points where it goes up, but it is very flat across the board, just a very, just a good time. And a lot, like, the tracks are all pretty consistently short. They're like. Mm -hmm. Almost like what the Rob Zombie link that we, you know, we talked about, they were like three minutes or under. I mean, Hatebreed, they don't have to do a lot no. with these songs, you know, they're a metal band that's like hardcore influence, so, you know, which is short songs, so they don't have to do a lot with this. And, you know, there's none of these songs go over three minutes except for one. Yeah. You know, that's and it's only about 33 minutes in length. Kind of like that, though, because like a lot of times, I don't know, it's a different animal like if you looked at if you were comparing this to something like the dream theater album which is just like such i don't want to say it's just such a project to have to listen to but it, it kind of is i mean you have to have two hours yeah. of your time to get through this and it's like all right i need something quick to boost me up real you know mm -hmm. he breathes pretty good he breathes great for that it's gonna slam it's gonna be pretty bitching consistently across the board and i find that you know jamie joss's lyricism in this album is it's like spot on for me. I would say the production is great because they switched over to Nuclear Blast completely. Yeah. They had, oh, just, they did. They, they had just been doing Nuclear Blast, uh, I just believe overseas, like in Europe right. and stuff like that. Here, that. here they had been using somebody else, but recently, I believe Everybody last is. year, they switched over to Nuclear Blast completely. So Everybody that's, is going there. They're yeah. doing really awesome stuff. I like noticed they, such a huge difference with bands yeah. when they go through Nuclear Their Blast. Their mixing is just so much better, dude, than like, yeah, for sure. So, I mean, due to that production, this album is consistent. Like, every song, I believe, is a hit. You know, as far as diversity, the most uh, different you'll get, I think, from Hatebreed at all, is probably Later. is probably Something's Off on this album. I mean, they, they incorporate, you know, that beginning bass line in there, which is a little bit different from them. And, I mean, Jamie Josta sings a little bit in, like, the... Uh, I believe after the second chorus, you hear him sing a little bit. That's as much as you'll get, uh, you know, from something different from yeah. Avery, I believe. And, you know, it's not too different to where it strays away from them completely. It's no Randy I like it. I like it. It's <laughs> not totally different, but, I mean, it's just a little, little bit of diversity in there. It's no overload. But, I mean, like I said, Hatebreed's not a band that I want to sound different. Yeah. I expect something from them every time, and the Concrete Confessional exceeded my expectations. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Sure. I agree. You know? 100% dude. I, I think that it's just, it, it'll be fun to actually watch like a lot of this stuff get performed at like festivals and shit like that, just because it, it's, they have like a pretty solid set list already, it's like pretty well established, yep. but now like they can probably work a couple of these songs into there and it won't, like the set won't suffer. A lot of times, like I feel lately with like records that come out, they try to incorporate. They have to incorporate songs from it. Mm -hmm. If the record wasn't very good, it's like you have dips in the set. But Heatbreed has just avoided that pothole because they actually feel like it's a continuously good record. So 
They have no worries. This band is thriving. Uh, I don't see this band letting up at all nope. in the future. Not if he keeps writing like that. No, nope, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs>